Good morning and welcome to your Wednesday this morning. Uh, welcome you to the studio roof uh, on the longest day of the year. Oh. It's the summer solstice today and uh, it's set to be a record-breaking scorcher. Now, if you remember back, uh, there is a reason why we are dressed like this. Since May last year, this morning roof has played host to 100,000 bees who have been working tirelessly to create this stuff. Our homemade willow bee honey. I've been told, do not open this because they will go crazy. But they seem to know it's in there. You're tempted. Even though it's sealed, I'm tempted, not tempted. You? They keep. They so, pull. how are they doing after the long winter, and uh, and how are they dealing with the scorching weather? Uh, to tell us, we've got uh, this morning beekeeper Tom Oliver. Uh, he's here. Although he's been very brave and not even you bothering with a hat. You are living on the edge, Tom. Why have you not got a hat on? I will in a sec. You will do Will that. in a sec? I'm all right now. Oh, I feel all namby-pamby now. <laughs> yeah, and, but you've uh, got a good reason. Well, I have, because just over there we've got our paramedics. They're going to make sure that I stay alive because I am severely allergic. <laughs> To be in wasp stings. Well, we had a bit of a chat about this earlier, so I know what to do. Yeah, but you're the... Yeah, we do. You do know what to do. It's butt cheek. Yeah. And it, and, and it doesn't go through clothes, so you need a full debagging. You have to debag me and... Uh, <laughs> Honestly, if this full happens, on in the cheek. we will keep rolling. It's fine. Actually, go for my thigh. Do me a favour. Do go for my thigh. And you're the one that's panicking. Well, I know, but that's... Well, because I had that honey and they sort of started flying at me slightly, but it's fine. Yeah, they can I'm read the label. Up. So, so, anyway. uh, so what have they been up to since, um, since last year? Well, through the winter, they would have gone into a, a form of hibernation where they're very inactive and just sort of stay in a bundle and keep their temperature about 20 degrees through the winter to keep everything warm, but they wouldn't be flying. Right. And then as we come through the spring, as soon as it hits about 14 degrees in, say, February, March, they'll start flying again and they'll start building up the numbers and start to store some honey. And are these the same bees that we had last year, or are yes. these new bees? No, they've done very well and it's actually survived through winter, which oh, is good. some colonies won't, um, but these have been very strong. So oh, well, that's how, how much honey will they make? Uh, last year, I know that you didn't do so well, but this year, per box should be about 22 kilograms of honey, and each of them have got two, so that's about 88 so far, oh, so it might go up to 100. Because we had a few issues last year, didn't we? Yeah, just like um, disease problems are quite persistent in bees anyway, and these ones, I believe, had um, a paralysis virus, which can wipe out a colony if not treated. Yeah. And the queen, we had a problem with the queen? Yeah, the queen um, was, I think, replaced. Oh, um, was she? Oh, oh my God. God. She was overthrown. Yes. Oh, wow. That's um, what they do sometimes. Well, we, obviously, they are city urban bees. Um, a lot of people think that being the city, you won't generate as much honey, but actually, London's pretty good for bees. Yeah, it tends to be that sometimes in the cities you produce more than in the country, because in the country you have fields of just one crop, um, and then when, it, when it's gone, that's it. But in London, because there's so many different trees and bushes and gardens, they can get a really varied source of pollen. Ours is so tasty. Yeah. It's beautiful. Depending on where you are, it must be something delicious. That I don't want them. What is really, delicious around here? <laughs> really floral. It um, so um, so they, they cope all right in the heat, do they? Yeah, actually, they, they love it. it. Once it gets to, a, say, 40 degrees, which hopefully it won't, then they start to struggle. But with our temperatures, they should be fine. As long as they've got water nearby, they'll be great. So how can you make your garden at home more bee-friendly, if you'd like to? If you, usually most people, if you leave, like, a, a patch where you don't mow the lawn, and so you get some wildflowers in, like, a meadow section, that's usually very good for bees, because it will be um, crops that will flower at different times of the year, so they'll yeah. get pollen all year round. That's and they're, and they're not easy to set up. You can't just think, oh, I want to keep bees and, and just do it. No, there's quite a lot. I highly recommend going to some associations and learning a bit about it before you do. But then actually when you come to getting them, there's a lot to buy, like yeah. all the boxes. Okay. And then the bees themselves need to come in the post. So there's a lot to think Can about. Can we Can have, have a, look? a little look and see yeah, what, sure. what they've been making? Oh, now he puts oh, the I see hat on. You do. So how, what do you do? Do you just open it up? You've got a smoker thing, haven't you? Yeah, I've got a smoker with me, which when the bees have been smoked, they Basically, they think their hive's on fire, and so they'll go and start eating all the honey, ready to oh. leave. So they're occupied eating, and oh, they usually gorge no, themselves. Oh, no, I don't like the sound of that. Um, and so they won't fly up and get us. So the top box, which I'll open now, this is where all the honey's kept. So we'll see how they've been doing. Ooh! This goes against everything. It doesn't feel right. I am the one that's <laughs> allergic. I and mean, that doesn't mean you get, like, the trump card on being scared of bees. So there we go, that's full. Oh my wow. goodness! Is that, so that's, Look at that's that. the honeycomb, and that's all. And they put those sort of waxy plug things over the edge. Yeah. So to keep the... once it's sealed like that with wax, that means it's ready to go. So and where are well all the done, babies? Uh, this, they're not in this box. They're in the bottom box. Oh, they're in the bottom, are they? So this one's just the top two would just be honey. Yeah. Um, and then I'll just double check the outside. 
Because if the outside's full too, that means it's completely full. I need and to does that mean we can box. collect the honey if it's full? Yeah. So this is the final frame isn't fully capped. Yeah. So right. once that's done, we can take these boxes off and then get some honey out. Oh, oh I see. Busy work. And do, do they not think where the hell did all that go? <laughs> We've spent ages making that. The honeybees tend to produce way too much. Right. And so because they just in case something drastic happens. So we can take some, and then as long as we make sure they have left with a little bit, they're perfectly all right. Well, Phil oh, is going to be well, well done. cooking well done, with that well a little bit later on. Well, uh, how long before we can start getting honey out of this? Probably a couple of weeks, a uh, week or two with this oh, weather. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Great. Gosh, that's really soon. Look forward to it. Thank you Love very it. much. There you go. You're welcome.